Norwegian horse. No, Mongolian horse. Oh. Welcome to the Heart to Heartland podcast. Here are your hosts. I'm Isabel. I'm Soida. Um, we're just two Heartland fans, basically. Yeah. Who have decided to start a podcast. Yeah, um, it's kind of it's kind of um, something we've been thinking about for a while, yeah. but then we kind of choked about it. Like, yeah, right. We were we joked <laughs> about it for a while, and I was like, wait, no, I think we should actually do this. And it, it's been difficult because it's eleven a.m. where I am. It's five p.m. where she. Yeah. Is. Because yeah, um, we're in the whole other <laughs> world right now. Yeah, but we're making it work because. Yes. Um, I think um, this could be something fun, not just yeah. for us, but for you guys as well. Um, because, yeah, hopefully there's right. <laughs> someone out there. Yeah, no. But, um, um, it, like, we basically talk about Heartland anyway, but then we the kind of wanted to expand that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so maybe, uh, like, other people will like talk about their ideas yeah. and like their their thoughts and stuff like that yeah so That's what the whole point of it is we just want to be able to like interact with other fans and talk about what's going on not just with episodes but with you know the cast and basically just it's just supposed to be a fun thing for everyone and uh-huh. um yeah and we've <laughs> we've known each other for a very long time yeah almost Early 10 years baby when <laughs> yeah <laughs> And it's, it's kind of almost ten years, yeah. And it's been a crazy journey. I mean, <laughs> not only it, like the oh, show, God, so like fun. yeah, but with us as well. Like we've gotten to know each other a little bit better. And yeah. you are one of my best friends, though, not just because of Heartland, but in general. Like we've been friends for so long now. Yeah, and we it's traveled together. Yeah, and hopefully planning to travel yeah. more when this yeah. we thing is all to Germany last year yeah happen yeah thanks thanks COVID yeah but um yeah um we just um felt like this could be something new to the fandom and I don't think this is something that has been done before not yeah like this at least yeah mm-hmm. so hopefully you'll take part in our podcast yeah, like please join us yeah we want all the help we can get we <laughs> need it yeah like this first episode is going to be us talking about just um yeah. few topics around the show but exactly. then in the next episode we'll um we'll be we have doing yes yeah we have a guest next week yeah we'll be doing different things in each episode so mm-hmm. so we'll try to keep this as entertaining and exciting as possible so mm-hmm. and if you guys have any ideas of like things you want us to talk about or if there's anything we can improve on yeah comment comment on youtube um or dm us like please tell us but um, I feel like we should probably clarify our um, our little icon photo there. You think? <laughs> so some of you may or may not know that both of us were have gone to Heartland together um, yeah. in studio and at the ranch. Um, and so <laughs> we did this little set visit and we're walking around... Um, you know, like the living. It was so surreal. Um, and was can like, I add something? Yeah, this was actually the first time we ever met in person. Yeah, so in we, person. we, it was kind of like we were like, "Oh hi," <laughs> and yeah. then something okay. just changed. Like they let us loose, and we were just like, crazy. literally, <laughs> like letting wild horses go because. I just remember, like, opening the door, and I didn't, like, take pictures or videos or anything. It's like I forgot how to live, and it was just so surreal, because at that time, it was season 10, 10 I yeah. Yeah. Watching the show for 10 years, and then you go and see it, and I'm like, this is a joke. This can't be. No, but the thing for me was, it was like, yeah. I mean, this makes sense. Like, I've been mentally here for yeah, right. a lot of years, right. and then it was like, sure, yeah. I'm here. Even though at the same time, it was very surreal. It was incredibly surreal. I remember, like, you and I and Courtney were just sitting there at the table in the kitchen, and it's just like, 
I just we just sat there for a little but not really doing anything just yeah. kind of taking it all in it was just like these it I was don't an know. experience yeah I don't know if this is the right word but like we had these like cheaters like yeah. were like oh my gosh I like yeah I was like shiv- like down my spine just like an utter shock because it was just so surreal to me like yeah and I remember you said because you're a big <laughs> Jessica Steen fan oh god help me you said something like oh yeah um she's her ass has been in this chair yeah or something like that that's iconic that's gonna go on my tombstone yeah for sure and the i i think that for me it was like oh like we're friends like i don't know like it just like was kind of initiation into being friendship is me talking about um jessica's ass in my seat i guess i mean that's how what an icebreaker (laughs) right exactly yeah yeah so anyway like yeah the, oh the photo we're so yeah. like girl <laughs> um but yeah we we were going around the set a little mm-hmm. bit i don't think that was like we went to the house first right yeah so we're walking honestly we were all just kind of mingling there was probably a group of like 15 people you'd mm, say yeah yeah maybe yeah we were all just kind of wandering through the studio but at this particular time we were in the the house I'm um, walking through like the kitchen and the living room. Crazy. Um, yeah. And then we went into the bathroom. Yeah. And um, before that, they had said like you can sit on surfaces, but like do not. Don't like, touch anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we and then you went into the top, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna. S- I like, yeah, sit, sit on the toilet. Yeah, like. It's a surface, like you would exactly. sit it on it, I right? I was the only one breaking a rule there. Yeah, so I was sitting, sitting there, um, and we were just like joking, and another fan who was with us came to the doorway. Um, he was kind of like acting as a babysitter, almost. literally. <laughs> oh my god! And um, yeah, I, I don't. I don't know. Um, I think he just like they took out his it. camera and he was just like this. And I think we just acted out. Our natural reaction <laughs> yeah. to was how that photo ended up being. Yeah. And we were just kind of like, oh, I was laughing so hard after that. Yeah. But, yeah. Th- that's that's... Close. Yeah. Just so you know that that picture was taken in the studio. It's not just some random photo we chose. Yeah. That's and- literally from Heartland. <laughs> and that's probably one of my favorite photos. Not only yeah. from that trip, but in general. In general. Like yeah. in general. Yeah. yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> because it, it's just so spontaneous. And I just it remember. Was spontaneous. Yeah. And uh, I just remember like all the funny memories. And, like, all the things we went into, like, oh, my God, look at this. Literally. And I kept knocking shit over. Sorry, I shouldn't say shit on here. (laughs) But, (laughs) like, five minutes after Gordon told us not to touch anything, I had, like, accidentally knocked over a picture frame. I didn't (laughs) see that. I don't think anyone did, I hope. And then I knocked (laughs) over that rake in the barn because I had locked myself into the stall. Do you remember that? And everyone was... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Because I didn't get it open. Because um, you were, like, running around a lot. I was taking yeah. a lot of pictures. So you there were, were taking t- pictures. I was losing my mind. <laughs> yeah. There were times where um, I kind of lost the sight of you. And then I just walked around. And I was like, oh, she's in a stall. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? There's an Isabel in her natural habitat. Yeah. When I was in the barn and I got out of the stall and I like backed into a rake and knocked it and it made like this really echoey sound. And Gordon looks at me and he's like, <laughs> he just shakes his head. He's like, I should have known better than to let you come here. And it was, uh, it was not Gordon, bad. by the way, um, was mm-hmm. the person who helped us get the set yeah. tour. So that's re- he used, relevant. Yeah, he used to work for Heartland and. Yeah. Just kind of, yeah. He did quite a bit of things for us at the time. Yeah, it yeah. It was such a fun experience. Yeah. And then, and then while we were there on set, 
the season had just aired, so no one oh. knew what was happening. And you're going around taking pictures of things that are spoilers. <laughs> and so then Scott had to run around and take stuff down. Yeah, interact. Like, what is she taking pictures of? <laughs> yeah, there was some um, interactive producer, yeah, sorry, um, Scott, who was kind of like walking behind us and going like shadowing you like what is she doing and then i remember him saying like um maybe not post that photo before yeah certain episodes have aired mm-hmm. because there was stuff about mongolia and yeah. who knows yeah, what no else knew about mongolia yeah. at that time and there's like i don't even was it something about the bears but there was also a I map i think what else happened yeah Oh, I also I know what else. Remember that billboard of Jade? Yeah, 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 yeah. That had not we're happened walking yet. Past, yeah, we're walking past this massive billboard, the one that Jade's doing. She was promoting soup or whatever. I can't remember. Yeah, what yeah, soup. I think. And then Ch- Jordan's like, "Oh yeah, don't post that." And this, <laughs> this, massive, this massive billboard. Like, yeah, we were like, "Hit it, okay." We what? Tried. So we're like taking pictures of it. It's like, okay, don't worry, we'll keep this to ourselves. Yeah, and we did. We did. Yeah. We did. We ain't no snitches, that's for sure. Yeah. The finale was on Sunday, and we haven't mm. talked about it yet. We usually talk after yeah, right. we've seen the episode, mm-hmm. but we decided that for the first episode, we're going to save it for the podcast. And, and I've been dying to talk about it. Dying. Yeah. Dying on the inside. <laughs> there, there, there's a lot of thoughts. There was a lot of feelings while I was watching it. Yeah, so why don't you start? Let me know. Start with something. Oh gosh, I I made a few notes. Um, My notes are out of this world, honestly. Like it's just like little sentences here and there. <laughs> That's all mine is. Oh all man! I need. Like when I started to watch the episode, I kind of felt like she wasn't doing much. But then yeah. when the episode ended, I realized that it was kind of something she needed to close the door yeah. for her yeah. arc that season. So um, I think it's definitely not as dramatic as maybe yeah. season 13 finale for her. Yeah, exactly. But then at the same time, it definitely gives a few ideas of maybe what will happen to her after this i think some of the things that i kind of thought represented her journey this season Mm -hmm. were well definitely everything to do with ty and moving forward from Mm -hmm. losing him and then i think it's been kind of nice to see her with parker yeah, and like an interesting relationship. Yeah, like I, I didn't expect that to be kind yeah. of as huge thing as it was this season. Mm-hmm. I actually really liked her, especially the end of the episode. I was bawling, but it's funny because what's that guy's name? I can't remember what his name is. That the cowboy he, he she was helping Cooper. Cooper. I was actually watching the episode with my aunt. I watched it like three times in a row, and the third time I watched it with my aunt, and she's like, "Ooh, that's her new bow." And I'm just yeah, like, that's what oh. everyone's saying. And I just feel like, not only, I, I really hope it isn't, because it's slightly too soon for that. Yeah, yeah, I have some thoughts about that as well, because, um, yeah. like, I think at some point, maybe there's someone she could, yeah. you know, at some point, yeah. start dating or whatever. But I think in this episode, it would have been too soon. And I don't think I got the, like, obvious romantic Mm -hmm. vibes. But I can, like, understand why people would think that maybe something's going to happen. But, like, if you think about her scenes with him, I mean, she mentions Ty. Like, I married this kid who used to be yeah so sweet and she's still wearing the rings so it's not like she's giving obvious like vibes Mm -hmm. to him and um but i I could see that maybe it could be a possibility 
for her and so. that's definitely not like the worst option i don't yeah. think that it's too soon and i also yeah. think that season 15 would be too soon for it as well yeah but at the same time that's the thing like how long is the show gonna go on yeah. and like how like if they want to want amy to have a new relationship mm-hmm. like what's the timeline for that like do they have to rush or is it gonna be like the last episode and Mm -hmm. whenever that is um and she's gonna be like oh i just met this guy you don't really know him but this is basically like what's gonna happen when the show ends or yeah well that's just it too is that it's gonna be either way the fans are gonna be upset with it Mm -hmm. either way for sure ever decide to do it um it's it's going to be and then you know what i really do think that amy the character deserves a happy ending but that doesn't necessarily mean there has to be a man for that yeah i agree yeah so because we have so many other romantic relationships on the show um that we don't necessarily need to have another one yeah and i think you know amy and ty's relationship has been this huge like yeah, I mean, she said they were soulmates, so it's not like she's gonna be like Tai Hu. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like even if she was kind of saying goodbye to him at the end of the season, I don't think he'll ever leave her mind oh, fully. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was I was saying last time that it kind of reminded me of Jack and Lindy. Mm. and then who knows how long jack was single before he met lisa like yeah you can have another chance at love but i feel like in a situation like this you probably wouldn't find it for a while because if i was her i'd be grieving for a very long time Mm. after losing my first love i couldn't imagine yeah and i think you know at the like at this moment i think she's very focused on lindy exactly and maybe thinking about like what her dreams are for the future because you know she didn't just yeah yeah she didn't just lose ties she lost like her dreams about yeah and, and kind of like a part of herself as well yeah so i think it would be nice to see her be single for a while just sort of see who she is on her own because when she met Ty she was 15 and now she's I don't know 20 how old would she be in Heartland do you seven what I'm not good at that she was 15 in season yeah yeah (laughs) no I can't yeah I can't either but basically she's not a teenager anymore and mother too yeah And like she said, too, that that's, like, Lindy's her first priority now, but obviously, like, taking care of herself so that she can be a, you know, take care of Lindy is important, too. Yeah. And I think, you know, just having that strong romantic relationship where Mm -hmm. you build kind of your life around this other person and then now losing him and it's just kind of be Mm -hmm. quite a change and i don't think having a new guy is necessarily a good thing right now because she's Mm -hmm. kind of lost herself and and that might um i mean i'm not saying it can't work Mm -hmm. but like story-wise it would be interesting to see yeah like watch who she who she is and what she wants to do with her life yeah because i was thinking like the the difference between how amy was in the premiere versus the finale was quite a bit of character growth within one season yeah which is crazy like kudos to amber because i can't imagine how emotionally challenging this season was because for the first how many episodes she practically had to cry in it yeah i've and I was just like, oh my god, poor Amber's just, like, probably dead after those days. On the- yeah, like, massive headaches or something. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and, like, she did so well, and I think that, um, th- I don't think there'd be anything wrong with potentially bringing in, um, a love interest for her to turn down. Just to be yeah. like, no, I'm not ready. I think that could be a potential storyline that I don't think anyone would hate, because especially if she turns it down and says, no, I'm not ready. Yeah, I think that's something a lot of people could 
relate to, not only if they're lost their lover yeah. to death, whatever. Mm-hmm. Just like if you've had a like big breakup, I mean, yeah. you're basically in the same headspace. It's like grieving the loss of someone who's still alive. Yeah. And I think for Amber as well, like, just, I mean, we've had episodes without Graham before, but then oh, yeah. it's like a whole season and just like um, Amy really losing him. So mm-hmm. that must have been really challenging for Amber as well to yeah. to act, but I think she did a great job. And I think... She really did. Yeah. yeah. And I think the season as a whole had, was probably one of the best um mm-hmm. not just um with the show but in a way like if you think about shows where there's been major character deaths it's like you rarely get this kind of service such a good season out <laughs> yeah. of such heartbreak because yeah when whoever leaked the information that Ty was going to die, I don't remember. It was on like the CBC media site mm. months, like almost like almost a year before the show even aired. Because yeah, it didn't we? It probably leaked in the spring and then didn't come out until um, what year is that? So early twenty. Wait, what? <laughs> you mean the season? Yeah, January. Oh my god, time is so weird right now. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. I don't even know where I was going with that. For her to act all that, but also to keep that secret for so long and try to keep people happy because a lot of people were already upset about the rumors and the possibility of losing Ty. So I'm just like... It was like a stressful few months because I literally have on video my reaction to reading that, saying that Ty, after Ty's death, and I was like, this, no way. Like, there's yeah. no way they're going to do this. I literally came back from the dead. I didn't watch 12, <laughs> and I watched some of 13. But when I found out Ty was going to die, I'm like, I won't believe it till I see it. Mm-hmm. And this has yeah. been one of my favorite seasons ever. Yeah. Ever. Not because of necessarily Ty's death, but because it brought this breath of fresh air yeah. and i felt like well, i've told you this after i watched the premiere i'm like i feel like i'm watching season three or something like it was yeah. just, just so heart landy that's yeah. hard, but you know what i'm saying yeah um i just felt like it was really what heartland needed um and like you said after a huge character death like that any other show i've ever watched it's just gone right downhill mm. but i think heartland's done very well in my yeah opinion. and i think they honor ty very well i mean there were a lot of not only scenes with him but also like the episode where caleb brings the motorcycle and yeah. the whole leather, leather jacket thing and yeah. all these little things that kind of make us go like oh oh man we lost that part of him as well if that makes sense and and i think in a way this season was returned to family if that makes sense as well because like family folk yeah because um there were a lot of scenes with amy and some other character other than Uh, ty because this past few seasons they're they were very um, Ty and Amy heavy mm-hmm. in a way, and of yeah. course there was Lindy, and they had Luke. Um, yeah, so true. I didn't mind that, but then seeing Amy with other characters, it really it was something I really loved, and I think I've missed, and I think that's one of the reasons I really love yeah. this season, especially like I think her scenes with Lou. I mean, having two sisters myself, <laughs> it's, it's like something I relate to. Mm-hmm. So I really enjoy that. I remember thinking, too, like, I really hope they do tie justice with his death. Uh-huh. Um, even me, like, not even being a big Ty fan, but just because he was such a um, pillar of the show for 13 years. Yeah. So I really wanted his send-off to be good really good 
And after I saw the premiere, I was like, oh my God, my heart. Like, it was just done so well. Yeah, I was really wow. nervous. Like, how would they do that? And would be, would they be like, oh, yeah, he died. And like, I let's do it. something else. But no, no, they didn't do any like anything like that. And I, I think they really dealt with um, everything so well. Very well. What about, oh my God, Lou and Mitch? What the heck? I sent to my friend after the scene, um, the last scene actually mm-hmm. with them, I just sent a picture of Mitch looking so sad. And I just wrote, I hate it here. <laughs> <laughs> because like, I mean, yeah. I mean, they're frustrating pairing yeah. because they're on and off constantly oh my god and like we've nine yeah exactly so i was like finally hoping they would settle down and actually take this relationship seriously and then, yeah and it's just i was really nervous about that throughout the season because um season 13 ended with them kind of breaking up but it was kind of vague was so weird and then you find out they're engaged in the premiere and yeah like, wait a damn minute like what the heck yeah and i kept waiting for them to actually like bring up mm-hmm. the engagement like oh do you remember when i proposed to you or something yeah. like that but it never happened and i was like okay this can be good yeah i just and- had a feeling in the premiere that it wasn't gonna last yeah and and especially with Peter being so present throughout the season, I'm like, I have a feeling. Yeah, and I, I think we've seen Peter be, being like, yeah. kind of like, oh, shoot, I've lost her before. Exactly. Like, but then because I think... He was so awful to her. Yeah. And I really liked Peter and Lou together, but then, what was it, season eight, is he was just so, he was just so, I don't know. It just wasn't Peter, especially with, like when Georgie went away. And, what he practically cheated on Lou, and then yeah. was like everyone was like, "Team Mitch, Team Mitch." Yeah. Kind of after this season, I remember watching it, and I'm like, I'm kind of Team Peter again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I can understand that, but at the same time, I fear like if they're really gonna bring Lou and Peter back together, is it gonna be like the same problems? Yeah. And, like, has things actually changed? Like. Are they actually better off as like just parents mm-hmm. and not mm-hmm. as a couple? It was definitely like I could understand that they probably had um, some other things in mind with Mitch this season, but because Kevin was filming when it calls to hard, he was needed elsewhere, so they had to kind of limit I feel that. Like I'm write him out though. I feel like he's yeah. going to do when calls the heart, so they had to get rid of Mitch somehow. Yeah, and that's the thing, um, kind of like, I've, I've been thinking, like, how long have they kind of planned that? Yeah. So was the engagement storyline just to kind of help Lou and Peter get get back together or something? Or realize that for Lou, it's not something she wants, like this new relationship or whatever. And um, I was also kind of, I don't know, frustrated. Was it used to create this drama between Amy and Lou. Like, was it was the whole engagement thing just kind of like a plot tool? And was, was Mitch used mm-hmm. for that? Yeah, I kind of felt bad for him. And, you know, I really <clears throat> felt like Lou and Mitch didn't have the chemistry this season that they have had before. Does that make any sense? Mm-hmm. I just felt like, especially since he wasn't present, which obviously isn't, mitch's fault it's because yeah. kevin was away but i just felt like it it, it kind of ran its course so yeah. when lou goes back to peter or is single i just think that i guess it wasn't meant to be maybe yeah i think um something i had a problem with as well was um during season 12 when lou actually like ran to the church to stop the wedding so it's like she went she went through all that trouble Mm -hmm. to let him know that she wanted 
to have this relationship with him. And then now Peter kind of did the same thing. And it, I don't know. It's just kind of like... It's kind of like what happened with Caleb and Ashley, because they were one of my favorite couples, and obviously mm. that had to end because Cindy went to do whatever she was doing. But they had such, like everything they went through and they still broke up it kind of reminded me of Lou and Mitch yeah because they did have quite a bit of back and forth too and also with Ty and Amy had quite a bit of back and forth too before you know but yeah Lou and Mitch I feel like they've been through so much and like got whiplash from the back and forth so I just think that yes there's been a lot of back and forth but I hope that there isn't more any back and forth yeah yeah because um Lou said they should have a break. I mean, mm-hmm. what does that mean? Yeah, no kidding. I would have just broken off there. Like, yeah. yeah. Because that's such a big... Well, I just remember someone told me once, like, if you have any doubts, just don't do it. Especially yeah. when it comes to things like marriage and kids. And it's like, that's just not... Like, she wants to focus on her career, which, like, all the power to you. Yeah, like, I'm very, very... Ha- I love Lou. Yeah. Like, her, you know, being, like, the female power boss that she is like she doesn't necessarily need to even have a relationship but it's just kind of a weird situation now with because i wonder like if kevin wasn't doing when calls the heart what would be happening yeah exactly and i think uh, something that annoyed me especially about this episode but also about the whole wedding planning thing Mm -hmm. was that mitch kept saying like we'll do whatever you want and i'm like yeah, yeah that's kind of yeah. nice but at the same time it's like what do you want mm-hmm. and then it just sort of exploded in this episode like oh, yeah i actually want kids yeah or okay yeah, season 12 i did catch myself up on it and i felt like when she went to the church i was like these two are end game like yeah, i really yeah. hope they get together it's perfect but i just feel like it kind of lost its whatever it lost its spark I yeah, I, I remember thinking that as well, like, th- that Lou going to the church was going to be, like, this gesture move, and then it would be something, like, we'd, we'd see them happy, and mm-hmm. everything would be better, and, but then it's just, I don't know, Yeah, they just love to break them apart or something. Apparently, yeah, I gotta do what you're good at, I guess. That Lou and Peter scene is just, it was just kind of pulled at my heartstrings because it really felt like you know the old Lou and Peter yeah it's just kind of like ooh, it's bringing up old feelings about but yeah I really don't know what's gonna happen like as for what's gonna happen in season 15 with Lou I don't even know I mean, yeah I think it would be cool to see Lou and Peter get back together not necessarily a really good decision but just to see what would happen, maybe? I don't know. I actually thought um, if this Lou Peter thing, something the writers kind of um, came up with because they saw people saying like, oh, I wish Lou would get back together with Peter. Yeah. Or is it just about Kevin Kevin or yeah, exactly. like, I, I wish we would know like the thought process behind this because like I love Lou and Peter like this like what after their divorce like they've been so good Mm -hmm. but um at the same time I fear like if they would get involved romantically again would that change Mm -hmm. what they've been able to achieve better off as friends or co-parents or yeah and um um about lou this season um i was like after seeing the finale i i was kind of disappointed because she won the whole mayor mm-hmm. thing mm-hmm. and then i the season started with her doing these like duties uh, mayor would do and i was kind of excited to see that like her involved with the community but then it kind of like withered kind of it was kind of there for the first few episodes but i think they may be treading carefully because they said in the beginning they didn't want to involve politics with heartland Mm -hmm. so i'm wondering like just kind of trying to keep it in the background making it a main storyline here and there but yeah yeah and i think maybe if 
COVID had something to do with it because they couldn't have big group scenes or anything like that. But maybe if in season 15, she's still a mayor, I would like to see more of that. That's what I was thinking about. How long is she mayor for? Yeah, I don't know. What is it, like three or four years? I know yeah. here where I am, it's like three or every three, four years we have. Yeah, you would think maybe something like that. Election. Yeah. yeah. She's going to be mayor for a little while. Yeah, unless she's like, okay, I'm done. I don't want to do this Bye. anymore. But like, <laughs> I think... Rick in charge. <laughs> yeah. Well, he would probably be happy. Because uh, yeah, he's been he's always like right. kind of like he's such a people person. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I love him. I hope yeah. that no matter what, he's he's so funny. Even the actor himself, like the videos Amber posted. Oh yeah, crying. for sure. Yeah, and I, I, I want him to be my friend. Yeah, and I I think I just love his energy. Like he's yeah, not he's afraid to make afraid to fly. So yeah, much. yeah. He's he's funny, and I think. The show needs something like that right now. He's such a breath of fresh air. He yeah. really is. We know what else has been weird this season is that Alicia hasn't been in every episode. Yeah. I mean, she, she was doing other projects. So, I mean, that's understandable. But I think I was talking to other people about this, but I feel like she was, or Jordy was kind of unattached to the family in many ways like of course she had scenes with them but she was kind of not involved that much yeah and i wonder um because in episode one of season 14 and then in episode um 10 uh there was this fiona character quinn was talking yes. to and i think maybe that's something that will mm -hmm. become an issue yeah. in season 15 if there is one well i was thinking too like i really like where georgie is now in her life because it's not yeah. about you know she's not a little kid anymore she's you know she's a woman she has you know she's just doing so well for herself and there isn't any i don't know she's just I feel like she's an adult now which is great yeah. she was a kid when she started which is weird because we're practically almost the same age so i'm like talking like i'm a grandma but we're like two years apart so it was just i missed having her around but she has i really liked the storyline she had though she yeah. didn't really have anything too in depth with the episode she was in it was just like oh, i'm so happy to see her you know, yeah. don't know what you have till it's gone. <laughs> yeah, and I think she has matured really nicely, yeah, and like so. sh she's just so grown up. I mean, she is. Yeah, and I I really like um, seeing her relationship with Quinn. Like it's almost unbelievable that they've been able to make their relationship work while having this coach. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. situation going. I and Amy were like, too, they did, you know, they did both. And I don't, like, I don't think they're trying to mirror Amy and Ty, but I do want to say so far with their relationship, they haven't really had a lot of back and forth. Like, this entire season, they've been, like, a straight line. Like, they've been stable, and it's been, yeah. you know, really cute to see, but um, I'm, it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the future with them. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think it was very interesting to see Quinn's dad and how yeah. she was with him and just like that was so cute her yeah, supporting like relationship yeah, yeah her supporting him because i know um it wasn't the easiest thing for him to have his dad around so i really enjoyed that um yeah you can tell he was yeah yeah and i, I such a great support for him yeah, for sure. And I really like their chemistry. And I think, you know, Alicia and Jordan get along so well. So it must be easier for them to kind of mm -hmm. share scenes together. Yeah, it, it, it felt like it just came so natural, which is kudos to their acting because their mm. job is to make it look so natural. And yeah. they've done that. Yeah. Um, that also um was there anything else you want to talk about when it comes to alicia um i was um i was uh, or george i was thinking of mentioning like i i think it's great that she's going to school because it's something that um that was kind of talked about with amy back in season four but you know she kept working with the horses and you know that's great i mean that's her 
keep turning. Yeah. yeah. So it's nice to see something different with her. And um, I think it works, you know. It works for her. It really yeah. Works because she's, she might be like this horse girl, but she's not also kind of like a city girl at the same time. Yeah. She, and I, uh, she just adjusts well to both environments. Yeah. And I think uh, even if she would still stay in school, I mean, I don't know how much time this Olympic thing yeah. will take, but um, I think it wouldn't be the worst thing if she wasn't in every episode, but as long as she would be in a lot of episodes anyway and have her involved with the family and say that, yeah. and just have her have some kind of storylines that drive her on. So exactly, like I want her to have um, a little more involvement in season fifteen with the family because her storylines were centered to her and Quinn. Mm -hmm. There really wasn't anything with her and literally anyone else. Yeah, there was a, in episode one she was worrying about Amy, but I think that's it. That was literally it, yeah. Yeah, and I was kind of disappointed that they didn't show Georgie's reaction to Lou and Mitch's engagement. They get along well with Mitch. Yeah. I think even better than uh, he gets along with Katie and they get along well. But uh, it would, would have been fun to see what her reaction would have been. They Well, she said, yeah, everyone knows now, but we didn't get to see yeah. anyone. Like, I think Which those... kind of disappointing. Yeah. Um, like, for me, those are the kind of moments that I want to see. I mean, I, mean, I know they're kind of simple and maybe not, like, something we always need yeah. to see, but uh, I don't know. I just like seeing yeah. stuff like that. And I think they kind of downplayed it because they knew they were going to break them up. Yeah, I think so. Maybe maybe that's the reason we didn't get to see that. Well, and I also thought it was weird that, going back to Lou now, how weird it was that she wanted her ex-husband at her wedding. Yeah. Like, I was surprised what? about that. Like, I think maybe it would have made sense for Katie and Georgie to be mm -hmm. like, is he going to be there? But, like... I don't know. For me, it was kind of strange that, I mean, I if you think like about it, either. like if Peter had gotten married with Jen, for example, mm -hmm. would Lou have been there? Yeah. I just, I can't see that. So. Yeah, I don't either. I really don't. So, yeah. I don't yeah. think even the ex, even exes who are incredibly good friends, I still don't think you'd be at each other's weddings. Yeah. So that's it's, just my opinion, though. I yeah. could be wrong, but I just felt like this is so weird. Why would they even invite him? Yeah, like, I understand that Lou and Peter are very close, but I mm -hmm. think that's just, like, even without Peter, not like, even if he wouldn't have feelings for her, yeah. then I think maybe it would be kind of weird. Yeah, it would be really weird. I felt like it was even weird that Katie was upset by it, and I could be totally off, and I'm like, why is she upset by it? I don't know. Yeah, I think it didn't personally make sense to me, but mm -hmm. maybe it made sense to someone. I've never been in that situation, though. I've yeah. never had to deal with that, so I could be, like, whatever, but I just felt like, why... Yeah, maybe maybe that's something that uh, the listeners could like share if they have like yeah, thoughts let's about that. You guys yeah. think about this because right away I'm like, this is weird. Like someone else has to think this is weird. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you guys have divorced parents who were at each other's new weddings. Let us know your experience. Yeah, we like maybe know. that's a thing that we just maybe don't know about. Yeah. Maybe it's the thing. Exactly. We don't know. Yeah. And another thing I wanted to mention about Lou real quickly is that mm -hmm. when she was planning the wedding, um, I remember back in season three, yeah, season three, when she was planning her wedding with Peter, she, I think she said she wanted a summer wedding. So when they had that whole yeah her joint thing, to wedding though yeah and she was like i'm planning the same wedding i had with peter i'm like why don't you use this opportunity to have the wedding you always wanted 
And we always talk about how there's never a summer wedding on yeah. the show. There's even been a fall wedding, which are like Caleb and Ashley and then Mackenzie and I can't yeah. remember, Ian. Ian. Those were yeah. like fall. No. Yeah. There's never been a summer wedding on this show. Yeah, I was kind of... So we're like Jack and Lisa tied AVP. All the weddings were in the winter. All yeah. Three. I was kind yeah, of... And Cassandra too. Oh, True. Do people actually want winter weddings so bad? <laughs> Literally, uh, the last, not like I even ever plan on getting married, but the last possible season I would mm. ever choose is winter. No. I hate winter. <laughs> I was kind of thinking like um, after episode nine, I was like, okay, if they're going to go through with the wedding, I hope they have a season 15 opener maybe with them. Mm -hmm. So it's like summer wedding or something. And that would be kind of fun way to start a new season. I mean, it would. from such it really would. a happy place. And also um, after wedding, like right away after wedding is not something we've seen before because usually all the weddings happen at the end of the season, so it's, we miss months, and a lot of things can happen in those months. Also, the six months later at the end of the episode. Was, oh, was, yeah. It kind of threw me off. I was like, wait a minute. I was supposed to talk about that because, um, you know, I, I really like that scene, but I had oh, this, yes, like, yeah. fear when Amy was looking to the distance that there was going to be, like, some new guy we've never met and he'd, he'd be like hi and it would be like this explosion like everyone would go crazy like who is that and then yeah. it would be kind of like a cliffhanger for season 15 uh, but no i could be like totally wrong and you corrected me last time but like why why did they jump ahead six months is it because of like the time difference because with covid and stuff or why did they do the six months ahead? I was so confused. And I'm like, wait, what season is it now? <laughs> like, is it fall? Is it... Wait, what? Yeah, and That's the thing is, um, the last episode, like, the most of the last episode, was filmed in December. So that would mean mm -hmm. six months later it would be, uh, yeah. But the trees, if I recall, like yeah. And if they're going to start filming season 15 in may then it's gonna be whack off yeah it's that's what i mean i don't know how they're gonna start season 15 because normally the seasons start off in the summer and even season 14 started off like when did they start filming august um, i don't remember but something yeah somewhere so, i'm just so confused and i mean why did they even jump forward six months yeah, and the thing is, like, I can understand Amy having that closure, but at the same time, I was kind of hoping she would start off more fresh in season 15. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not saying she yeah. should forget Ty and, like, no, yeah, you no, know, yeah. but, like, that this season would have been kind of high season if that makes sense um mm -hmm. and the next season would be more about amy her moving on yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. no i agree with you personally i pr would have preferred if she would have started off uh, from a different place but yeah and uh i just remember like i personally thought that the ending of the episode even though i was confused about this whole six months later thing i think it was done well yeah when when I when she had those flashbacks with the jumping course, I'm like, oh my god, if she waves, I'm gonna cry. And then she waves, I'm like, oh no, <laughs> ouch. Yeah. Like, oh my god, stop. It was just I thought it was done so well, and um, I'm just incredibly confused about um, the ending of it, like the six months later, and it being fall. Yeah, I think kind of like. I was so on the edge about the whole, what if there's this new guy there thing. Mm -hmm. But during my first viewing, I was kind of like, oh, what just happened? But the more I think about it, the more I like it. And the symbolism of the whole yeah. thing, you know, her waving yeah. Ty goodbye. And I don't know. Yeah, I think they did a really good job of including Ty. Almost like pretty much in every episode, there's at least been a mention of him or something. Yeah. 
So for them to end the season like that, I just thought it was really well. And I think that the fans liked it as well. Yeah, and I think while it was kind of bittersweet, I think it was also kind of happy way to end the season. It was kind of like happy tears. I wasn't yeah. crying because it was, I mean, it was sad, but it was just kind of like, well, you know, when you're when someone you love dies and then you think about something, you know, years later, it's like, oh, it hurts, but it's also kind of like happy. Yeah, happy. and you're like, oh, I'm so glad I had that moment with them. And now, now you know, Amy can go back to that jumping course and be like, oh, I want to remember Ty or mm-hmm. whatever. Because, you know, at that time, obviously, because that was season one, but even like in these fictional characters' lives, even at that time, they would have never guessed what would be happening 14 mm. years later or 13 years later or whatever. Yeah. And that's nice. just kind of like, it's eye-opening even as people ourselves that you really don't know what's going to happen and life is short, incredibly short. Yeah. And it's just like like what Amy said to Tim. Like, Tim and Jessica, by the way, <laughs> my second favorite couple on the show now. Yeah, we'll get to them later, yeah. but like... Yeah, but what what she said to Tim about you know, life is short. I'm just like, and you know what? She had, I feel like she's really growing from the experience that she had with Ty's death. Yeah. And I think, you know, I mean, this season was written before the COVID thing happened, but I think, you know, I think all of us have had a really rough year uh, and a lot of us have lost someone, whether it's because of COVID or something else. Mm -hmm. And I think, while this season could have been kind of depressing in that sense, like, like I, I get that mm-hmm. people wanted to have that escape, you know, yeah. that Heartland usually is, like that happy, happy ending escape. But then I think for me personally, I think I saw it as a way to deal with grief, maybe uh, for some people in mm-hmm. their personal lives and yeah. just kind of reflect that, that experience with the show that they love too yeah Yeah. and the thing is like these characters have become so important to us it's like they're our family so i think there's like (laughs) yeah she's showing off her heartland tattoo in case you're just listening yeah yeah so it's tattoo I could imagine that this season could help a lot of people and maybe it already did or, Mm -hmm. and it can in the future as well. Like Mm -hmm. when people go back and they think like, oh, like just the ending scene, like thinking that um, season one episode, it's like Mm -hmm. they would have never known what would happen. And it's just kind of like, it made me think like, you need to enjoy those moments while you still have them. And I, I think that's an mm-hmm. important mm-hmm. thing to remember. Yeah. Like, e- even if you're sad, like, mm-hmm. you have those memories that you can yeah. hold on to. And, yeah. yeah, you know, our, everyone's, you know, we're all going to die someday. And it's, like, not to be depressing. It's to be inspiring to just live. Yeah, live exactly. every day to do what makes you happy and with your loved ones and not to spend any time any more time than you have to with stuff that doesn't make you feel good or people yeah. who don't make you feel good i think that watching season 14 was incredibly weird because of this pandemic like i mm. remember watching the premiere and i'm just like like i just felt jealous that it was so normal like yeah. it was so normal and it's just like wow i'm jealous because i wish i could be there and just have that normalcy in this like non-real world, this heartland mm. world where COVID doesn't exist. It was just, it was such a breath of fresh air, but it yeah. also made me like, oh, I'm jealous at the same time. And um, it was that like hour of escape on a Sunday night, you know, while yeah. we were battling this pandemic. Yeah, and I think, you know, I always hear about people saying that it's an escape. And, you know, some people say said about this is like, it's not an escape. It's just more depressing stuff. And I understand that. Yeah. But at the same time, it was an escape, mm-hmm. but just in a different way. Like, yeah. it's just what you said. Just like with Heartland, like Heartland is, it deals with family. It deals with real life issues like death, mm. like, you know, all the kind of 
incredible things that they they talk about and do on this show that's all real life things that a lot of them i've personally related to myself i haven't personally related to what amy went through this season but because i grew up watching these characters for 14 years Mm. it was like the shot to the heart and ty wasn't even one of my favorites but it was just the fact of losing such a pillar and watching Amy go through that heartbreak, I felt like I was going through it with her because yeah. I was someone that I knew for, knew, <laughs> quote, quote, yeah. for, you know, that long. Yeah, and I think it wasn't just with Amy, but with Jack and, like, everyone else, like, yeah. what Ty represented for them. So I think it was an interesting season in that sense as well, because it's, it, it's not always the one person is in one thing. Yeah. There are a lot of things, even if you've never lost a husband or something like that, maybe you've lost a brother or a, a son or whatever. Like it's something universal that we can all relate to. It is. Yeah. On some sort of level. And that's, you know, the Heartland has different generations from, you know, Lindy all the way to Jack. There's hmm. like four generations in the show. So it's, it has something for everyone. Me personally, I don't watch it for, you know, the younger characters. I watch it for, you know, the main characters who have been there since season one that I've grown up with. It's nice to see them have their own families and expand. Um, but yeah, like I, I just, just thought it was so well done. Um, who else was in it? Was Caleb in it? Was Caleb this episode? In it? Yeah, he was very briefly. Um, I just oh, wanted okay. to mention something before we go into that. Um, you know, I saw people saying um, before this season started, during this season, and maybe even after the season ended, that it was kind of like, this is the end, right? Like, mm -hmm. Where do we go from here? But if you think about the show all together, like the first episode, Marion died. Someone yeah. really um, important. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, maybe we didn't know her that well because, you know, we didn't have much time. Yeah. But her but her legacy has continued mm -hmm. throughout the show. And I think... Mm -hmm. You know, death is an end in some ways, but it, it's also a, a beginning for something new. So I think, you know, if there is season 15, it's it's like, right. yeah, like I, I don't see this being the end. I don't, especially after um, seeing the, you know, the ratings, especially with Heartland on Netflix. Like, I was impressed. Yeah, me so too. very impressed. I was like, this has got to be a joke. But I'm like, I'm incredibly proud. Yeah, and I think, you know, people being stuck home and everything, I think maybe the show has taken a new level. Mm -hmm. And it's like you said, like, it's an escape to see something so normal. Yeah, so. it, was just, it was weird. And that's, I know we talked, we, I'm just quick, make a quick note and then we can move on. By looking at the photos that were taken on set during filming, you would have never guessed what was happening. Yeah. You would have never guessed from, like, the photos that, you know, Michelle or Amber posted that Amber had, like, an insane crying scene, like, five yeah. years before that. Or Michelle had this one picture um, posted of her while they were filming Ty's like funeral scene or you know when they spread his ashes and I'm like you guys were crying two minutes before that yeah what? would have never guessed I just thought like that's it was cool it was very cool I thought like they just they kept it a secret well besides whoever leaked it like four yeah. months prior um they did a good job yeah and i um i wanted to add to that that even if we kind of had a sense maybe this would happen i kind of mm -hmm. appreciated that they just didn't flat out say it like yeah oh yeah ty's gonna die because i think uh, that would have kind of ruined it for me like just seeing yeah. it myself and then the whole yeah. journey like i would have had too many expectations or like i would have assumed too much and i think yeah. this way i was more open to the idea and the, the whole season i was incredibly excited but i went in not knowing what to expect none of us did like you just said like we had no idea what we were in for but as a whole season 
it's one of my favorites. Yeah, me too. Yeah, and I, I was like, wow. And I think in a way it worked that it was just 10 episodes, but at the same time, I'm like, I wanted more. I, I want to see more. And, mm -hmm. you know, I wish some um, storylines would have been expanded a little bit more, but like, I'm not complaining too much. I mean, the season was yeah. amazing. It was amazing. I was also thinking when I found out that, excuse me, that Tim was going to have another love interest in 10 episodes. I'm like, I don't want this to feel rushed. Yeah, same. Because there's only 10 episodes. So I was really worried about that, but I love them so much. I was like, wow. Yeah, and I think it's all about the chemistry. Like, even if they would have just a few scenes or just a couple of lines, it's it's about what we kind of experience while watching them. It's like us falling in love with them. So it, it kind of helps exactly. um, their storyline as well. Yeah. What are your thoughts on them? I really love them. I mean, Me I'm... Too. I'm... I still am. I, I mean, I love Casey. I, yeah. She she was one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. And I was really, really sad when she just left. And, and just the whole thing with Tim going after her. Like, I I was disappointed about that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, I love Jessica. And I, I think she's, like, not just with... Tim, but as a as a whole, her own person, like she's, I I like her. I I think she's I not afraid of you know trying things yeah. and saying what she thinks, and I I think that's something fresh because this family <laughs> is all about keeping secrets, not communicating. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah, and so have like a good balance because Tim's crazy. Yeah. He yeah. has to have a good balance, and he's, like, so smitten by her. It's just like, oh, Tim's falling in love. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of this scene um, when Casey was still around, and then Tim and Lou were at Maggie's, and mm. Tim was acting weird or something, and Lou said something like, oh, you're falling in love with her, and it scares you, and it's yeah. kind of like that again. And I just really appreciate seeing that side of Tim mm -hmm. so yeah. I'm I'm really excited about them I am so excited and I just like their chemistry together is cr like off the charts crazy wow. I was just like get married now. <laughs> it was just and you know oh my god I just thought it was done so well um they just have great chemistry together and they balance each other really well. Yeah. So I'm just, that's probably what I'm looking forward to most in season 15 is to see where that goes. And I hope, I hope they don't mess it up because I'm excited. Yeah, me too. I'm, I'm wondering like what the, um, like what the idea for the character Jess mm -hmm. Jessica is. Like, is she going to be just a guest star? Or, like, yeah. I is think she going to be... She fits in well with the whole thing. Yeah. She's, she drives well with Lou, and she's also, you know, had a lot of scenes with other people as well, like Caleb, too. Even Caleb liked her. Like, I just think she goes well with the entire family. Oh, and Lisa. I mean, that's something, like... Yeah. Lisa and her could be like really great so I would love to see more of that as well and like there wasn't any really anything to talk about when it comes to Jack and Lisa in this episode um, uh, except that one scene with them skating together well that was so cute <laughs> that's funny because I was like when she wasn't skating last episode I'm like oh that's weird like I wonder, wonder why and then I saw her skating in this I was like oh good God. Yeah, and they, oh, I just love that little so scene. Cute. Like so cute. Uh, and, and the thing is, I don't think it was just Lisa and Jack. I think that was Jessica and Sean. 
Yeah. Like I, uh, it seems like that. I'm like, yeah, that's not Jack. That's Sean. Like, you, yeah. especially when it comes to background scenes. There's, I was watching what episode was I watching? The Ty and Amy wedding episode, and they're dancing in the background, and I know what they're talking about because they told me. Like, they're just like, oh, oh really? Sean and Jessica stuff. Yeah. And in that episode, Jessica had this background scene with Sean's wife Sue. Uh huh. And yeah. so Sue told me what they were talking about. She's like, I didn't want to do it, but they were like, and she's like, they were just like apple orange, apple orange, apple orange. She's like, that's what they were. That's what. They were talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Is that really what she, they do? Yeah, it's Jessica. She's like, what? What am I supposed to say? She's like, you know, apple orange, apple orange, banana. Like just to make it seem like we're having a conversation. Uh, like, that's funny. Yeah, she's like, wow. I didn't want to do it, but because they're like, Jessica needs a friend in this scene. But yeah, was, I thought it was, and because no one really noticed it either. That's you know, that was Sean's wife and fake wife. <laughs> yeah, and the funniest thing is that they're like good friends. I think they are. They are. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, like the day when I was on set with Jessica, uh, Sean and Sue were both there at the same time. It was just kind of like it was really cool, and you know, yeah. kind of, just to be like all friends like that in real life too is. It just really goes to show how good the acting is, right? Yeah, and it also proves that it can be done. I mean, exactly. It doesn't have to be all this like jealousy or drama or anything like that. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. it's it's part of your job, but I didn't realize until I went to film school and I took this um this acting course that it really is just your job. Yeah. I mean, until I had like this romantic relationship on screen, I was like I don't understand how you cannot literally fall in love with the person that you're filming yeah. with. And I was like, oh, yeah, this, I get it now. It's literally work, and there's like 50 people staring at you while you're filming. Yeah. So it's just, yeah, it is really just work. Yeah. I mean, I can understand that, but I've never been in that position. So I, I don't know how I would feel about that, but it's I can, yeah. yeah, I can understand that it's possible and, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, um, Very I wanted to mention this little detail about Tim in this episode. Like when Caleb walked in with um, his son, Carson, and, you know, we see Mitch being all like, oh, look at this guy and yeah, all that. And stuff, yeah. But then Tim walks in and I think this is just chris potter and not tim but he he kept um caressing carson's head like really? it just looks so funny i, I can't okay, explain I can it but back and yeah that. it's just something i noticed i'm like what are you doing <laughs> that's funny i gotta go back and watch that. yeah and i, I think tim and jessica having that scene when they're on the skating pond did you, did you see sean skate in the background no, I, I don't think so. I need you to go back this. and watch that scene because he's skating behind them and just like staring. I was like, oh, that's funny. I feel like that's a Sean thing, not a Jack. Yeah, thing. like sometimes I think even if they're acting, some of their real life personas come to the room. Oh, 100%. Like Chris and Tim. I had this one conversation with Chris once, and I'm like, I don't know if I'm talking to Chris or Tim right now because it was just such a Tim thing to say. So at this point, season 15 hasn't been officially confirmed, but there's been some talk that it might be happening. So we were thinking about maybe, maybe making few predictions about what could happen. And then later on, if season 15 ends up happening, we could go back and see if we were even close exactly yeah so if you guys have predictions let us know we want to talk about them here on the podcast um or yeah let us know what you think is going to happen or what you want to happen and um well, i'm sure we'll be talking about this more in the future but um so yeah do you want to start off what are your predictions um i was thinking about starting from amy mm -hmm. and um um, you know, I, I can see season 15 being about her finding out what's her dream and like what her future will look like. Mm -hmm. And um, I know we talked about Cooper a little bit earlier, and I think he might play part in it. 
whether it's just like as a friend or as something more. Um, but because, you know, he has this ranch that has horses and these troubled kids. And I think I could see that being part of Amy's journey because of, you know, not only because of the horse aspect, but also because, you know, this is something Marion used to do. And then, you know, Ty came around. And I think this past season with Parker, you know, she's she's a natural with kids. So I could see this being something that she would keep doing maybe at Heartland or maybe at Koopa's Ranch or something like, you know, having kids involved with horses and stuff like that. So I think that at least I'm hoping it will. I hope that, um, you know, something, something for her to do that she's good at and something new. I really hope that happens. And whether or not who her and Cooper end up having some sort of other relationship will to be determined. Although I I hope that it doesn't not right away anyways. If that yeah. if that's a path that the writers want to take with them, we can see where that goes. But I just hope that it's not done too soon. If something were to happen with whoever, I think it has to come from Amy and Amy's I think starting that it point. Come naturally, or from yeah. Below or feel like it comes naturally or anyway or look look like it comes naturally yeah. um i wouldn't mind seeing where it goes but i also feel like i don't know how much i don't know how i feel about the chemistry because i don't feel like it's there it could mm. be yeah that's the thing i'm um, into it yeah but right now i'm really not sure how i would feel about that i was actually thinking like before we got to see um cooper's ranch um i know the actor is actually involved with horses in real life so i was thinking what if it's something like he's kind of like amy in a way like it would be kind of fun to see someone who gets what she's doing i mean i don't think he would be exactly like Amy, but like just that Amy's being this miracle girl, this like celebrity almost in Hudson. Yeah, and, um, you know, she's kind of unique that way. And it would be fun to kind of have even a friend who's kind of in the same, um, the same position. Yeah, exactly. So I was just thinking that I don't know if it were to happen but it just crossed my mind before we actually saw cooper's ranch like it, just a po possibility of what could be interesting to see with amy and i don't mean they I, should I be it, yeah. yeah i don't think it, if something like that were to happen it should be like a rivalry or anything like that but more like no. uh you know i'm helping you yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so that's just something um mm. that crossed my mind i that I mentioned. Besides that, with Amy, the only other thing that I could potentially see happening or is just whatever's going to happen with Lindy. Um, yeah. I mean, she's starting she school or, or so. kindergarten. What age do you go to? Uh, three or four. Yeah, she's like four now. Yeah. She'd be going to school. Yeah, I think she, she isn't in school right now in Heartland, is she? I don't yeah. think so. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think that will be interesting to see if they actually do it. Like, they're, you know, they're always being close, but, you know, the losing tie, they're really, really close. And they've had each other. And then if Lindy goes off uh, for a few hours per day, like, how is that going to be for Amy? Because yeah. usually, As a mother, yeah. yeah, because at least usually uh, she's just around the house. Someone's looking after her. So, so Amy can just pop in anytime. But then, you know, having that different thing is could be interesting to see. It'll be different because just like how, you know, how Lou was when Katie went off to mm. school, right? It's going to be the same thing. Yeah. Or similar. Or at least I hope that they show it. Like, it's not something necessarily important, but it would just be... Um, kind of like a full circle moment. Yeah. Who else would he have? Lou, I know we were talking about, I mean, she's probably still going to be mayor. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, personally for me, my prediction is probably also my hope at the same time. I'd like 
to see Lou and Peter get together. Whether or not they stay together is a whole other story, but I feel like where we're at right now, it's definitely going to be explored, Peter and yeah, the relationship. Yeah, I think if that's going to happen, I hope that they actually, like, have them talk about these things and, mm-hmm. you know, uh, go over, like, why they divorced in the first place and mm-hmm. just, like, not push them together just because gabe has other projects he's doing Mm. just like kevin so no matter where you go it's it's gonna be tricky yeah because they're not always gonna be there but gabe was on set more this season than than kevin was yeah i think um he was available the first part of the season and then he went off to shoot tech Tacoma, Tacoma, F- Tacoma F- yeah, whatever. F- F- yeah, okay. And I mean, you could tell <laughs> from the. <laughs> yeah, I was just I was about like, to God, say. I can't take him seriously like this. I was just about to say that, I mean, it, it was obvious from the phone or the face. Mm-hmm. The face time, I guess. Yeah. 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 So, but I thought it was kind of like I knew that that's his thing in that other show. The whole mustache thing but as someone who maybe doesn't know might think like what has happened to peter yeah, exactly. so well, add in the like the face wig that he was wearing in yeah well that just you could tell it was fake yeah and i mean at the beginning of the season i think that was his own beard but maybe he had to shave it off for the show yeah. So I was just like wondering if they even explored the option of him doing like his own fake beard or something because that's the that the mustache. Like, how long does it actually take to grow a mustache? Especially his isn't like a thick mustache. Can he just like shave it off? But I mean, unless if he was literally doing Tacoma and Heartland at the same time, I think he was at the very same time because then that would make it tricky. I get that, but it's. <laughs> <laughs> Well, same with Kevin's hair. And I said this to you. I'm like, what's yeah. going on? I was like, his hair's like sticking up on this end. And I'm like, I don't know. Well, I mean, I've seen pictures of When Calls the Heart. I don't watch it. It's not my thing. But I was just kind of like, what is happening? What's going it, on with everybody's hair? Yeah, I don't watch the show either. But I think he might have this like hairstyle in it where he's, it's very like styled. I think so. So it's not sticking out that much, but it's like shorter from the like lower parts, and then has like a yeah, more more texture. This season, we know why their hair looks like that. Yeah, but from someone else's standpoint, it'd be like what the heck. Yeah, exactly. Um, speaking of Kevin, I mean, do you see him coming back next season at all? I feel like if he does, it's going to be to say, like, goodbye. Yeah. I feel like maybe one or two episodes, but I, I, I think that he's going to win Cold the Heart. Yeah. I think, you know, it, it's been very frustrating to see, like, this whole back and forth and kind of mm-hmm. Mitch being this insecure person and kind of going with the flow and like not really having his own storyline or something like that but i um yeah i i think i'm gonna like i want to say i like mitch but i at the same time i understand that there's like problems with his character that i'm not happy about but like just thinking about back to i think season 12 or 13 where they were having that cook off with jack Oh, the steak thing. Yeah, either way. um, You know, I I just... Those were the kind of things that I loved with his character. And I think his character had so much potential to be something great, but I think they underused him a lot. So I understand maybe it's time to let his character go, but at the same time, I'm kind of bummed that they didn't really explore his character that much. I mean, there's a lot of stuff they could have do, like, with his cousin and the army and, like, even with Maverick, like, yeah. Well, in that episode they did, oh my gosh, I'm thinking it's season 10, um, his PTSD moment. Yeah. And how it was just kind of, like, brushed over. Oh. 
and I am not a fan of season 12 at all because of the eating disorder storyline that they did with Georgie. Mm. Um, I just felt like it was done incredibly poorly and not sensitive enough to the people who incredibly struggle with eating disorders. Mm. I thought that it could have really been used to, you know, amplify it for eating disorders and, yeah. and just like with mental health too, to get rid of the stigma and just have but you know she was just like cured of it in one day yeah and I just felt like it wasn't done okay but that's completely off topic but yeah but uh, um something I wanted to mention about that as well is was um I was kind of surprised they even went there yeah but then disappointed that they didn't really follow through like I think that's really important topic overall but especially in the horse you know sports like exactly yeah. yeah so i really would have wanted them to expand that to season 13 but if the topic ever comes up again um whether it be with katie or lindy somewhere down the low road i hope that it's something that like georgie can like talk to them about mm. and like to kind of make up for that kind of mess that they did in season 12 like um it's not you know i'm glad that for this character that um it was a easy fix for her, but it's really yeah. not like that for people who really do struggle with, you know, anorexia or bulimia or whatever you, you know, whatever you struggle with. And um, I was just incredibly disappointed with that story. Incredibly yeah. disappointed. Yeah. And about um, season 12 and 13, I feel like in my mind, they kind of pick um, one season in a way because there were a lot of um, storyline that, overlapped and just the feel of the whole those two seasons they feel kind of same to me so if i got get them wrong it's because of that literally though i can't tell the difference and i don't even think i haven't seen season 12 all the way through nor season 13 um i've just kind of put bits together and then i read mm. your blog as well and so I, I know what's happening through that and i was just kind of like yeah this isn't something that i think i would like <laughs> But back to the predictions. So we yeah. talked about Lou, Lou a little bit. Yeah. Um, now, when it comes to Georgie, obviously she's going to be training for the Olympics. And um, my only prediction would be obviously the Olympics and then her relationship with Quinn. I want that. I want to see that grow and last. But you know, having a little bump here and there is quite realistic as well. Yeah, I agree. And I was talking to someone about Georgie's possible storyline for next season, and they brought up, like, what if she gets hurt while training? Like, how would that affect their relationship, not only the professional side, but also, like, the personal side? Like, mm -hmm. like what if she gets hurt and he feels guilty for like pushing her or, and then, or then like, he she looks away for a second and she falls or something. Yeah. Like yeah. Right. Or she feels like she's kind of let him down because she got hurt or something like that, because it works on so many levels. Like I, I think that might be interesting to see, but it's a really good opportunity um, yeah. to have, there's a lot of different opportunities who could come from that particular relationship, and I hope that it's explored well. Yeah, um, just like I don't want it to be anything serious. I mean, this is Heartland. She has to win, yeah. you know. But, like, I think it would make nice drama for them. Storyline. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, they really didn't have anything happening in season 14, which is okay because I think the focus was – um amy and then jack mm. as well i feel like yeah. those two were the focus of the season or um the whole tie thing was the center of the season um so i am hoping she'll have a little bit of more screen time yeah 15 but i also think that alicia probably has other things going on too yeah yeah maybe but i i really wish whatever it will be that she will have something big happen mm. to her one yes. way or another, yeah. Mm -hmm. But of course, she'll bounce back. But I think it's just, especially with um, her relationship with Quinn, I mean, we haven't really seen how they deal with difficult times. We've seen them be a um, strong couple, and I think it would be interesting to see them struggle a little bit and then coming out even stronger. 
no, I agree. Yeah. No relationship has no struggles, right? Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with having them. It, it's normal. It's what you, it's, we're, it's our natural. It, every human does it. Every relationship has it. So eventually that's going to have to be explored realistically anyways. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're probably in like their honeymoon phase now. <laughs> yeah. What about Tim and Jessica? What, like, what, what do you think will happen with them? Like, are they, are, are they going to keep traveling or are they going to settle down? Like, This what, what, interesting what? Because it could really go either way. Now, there's a difference between my prediction and what I want to happen. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I want to. I would think the character Tim deserves to be happy and have his person because he goes through women like water. Yeah. And I want him <laughs> to have that time, that moment, that person, and they work so well together. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming by the time the episode starts, they're back from traveling. I'm hoping they'll settle down because, I mean, they're not like spring chickens. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, it would be cool to see a wedding yeah and i because I, I don't think it's going to be lou's wedding no uh and um it's interesting because whoa well, um sorry i almost knocked oh, my okay. computer down <laughs> i was got so excited no um but um um just interesting because this season we saw jessica having this whole thing like I want to see things. I want to explore places and I want to, you know, experience different kind of things. Like when does that stop for her? Like, mm -hmm. what is she yeah. after? Like mm -hmm. when That's will she, problem. yeah. Like when will she feel like, okay, I've seen what I wanted to see or explore what I wanted yeah. to explore. So I think that's going to be um, a big question for, for them. Because that also determines, you know, what kind of relationship she will have with Tim. Well, you know what? It kind of reminds me of Jack and Lisa in that sense because, you know, Lisa was always traveling. And I feel mm. like there's so many parallels between the two couples because yeah. Tim and Jack are alike. And I think that uh, Lisa and Jessica, which is weird to say, <laughs> Lisa and Jessica yeah. are kind of alike at the same time. So... But when it comes to Jack and Lisa, she eventually, you know, not necessarily gave up traveling, but put it aside. And now she's, she's got a family. She, she yeah. doesn't travel like she used to. And I'm thinking that's what's gonna, I'm hoping would happen with Tim and Jessica to realize that, you know, you can travel and you can go all these places, but you want to have someone to go home to or mm. have a home. And especially I feel like at that point in your life, that could be something you're looking for after you know she's done exploring or whatever it's interesting the place tim is kind of in i mean he lives in that rv i think still mm -hmm. and um you know we have that episode with caleb almost quitting and then he was kind of like no 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 you're too good mm -hmm. to quit or whatever mm -hmm. and is he becoming more free to kind of travel like what if that's something tim suddenly wants to do and you know what that wouldn't be a bad idea because you know that could be a good storyline for them and then they'd be gone for an episode here and there but they'd be mm. you know together and then i i think that they could probably have both because unlike jack tim isn't necessarily that much of a homebody because he's traveled with yeah um, you know he traveled with janice a lot too and yeah and casey, casey. yeah So I think that that could really work for them. I think maybe they, maybe they'll go traveling together. And yeah, so yeah it's going to be interesting to see because of the six month jump at the end of season 14, who knows what's, where we're going to be at. But also with Tim and, um, Tim and Caleb, my prediction for season 15 is obviously that their rodeo school keeps going, but Caleb will step up like you, you know, like we just talked about, mm. but You know, to still be there and still have his relationship with um, Jade as well. True. I wonder what she's thinking about this, you know. Well, because by the end of this season, I can't remember, she was just trying to practice bareback on the board, yeah. right? She didn't really have a storyline this season. She was just yeah, kind of... She... 
and I wasn't a fan. And honestly, I think it's probably because, you know, Alicia was gone too. And a lot of Hmm. Jade storylines, you know, sometimes have to do with Georgie. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, Jade often has scenes with Tim and since Tim had a lot of scenes with Jessica, you know, there was not much opportunity to see Jade. And I remember saying this at the beginning, like I didn't think that anyone else was going to be a focus this season besides what was happening with Amy. And then, and I remember saying to you, I don't think Jack and Lisa are even going to be in this season much at all because the focus is going to be on Amy and what's going on with her. So, but what they did, which is what I was surprised about, is that they, Alicia was gone and then uh, Madison was there and gone. Who else wasn't around? Well, Kevin as well. Um, Yeah, I mean, and with those, with those three I don't characters put to the background they really used what was left and i was incredibly impressed very impressed with what they did what they did with what they had especially during the pandemic i knew that um you know jessica steen was mm. on set sometimes you know we saw pictures yeah. or like little clues That's the only way we know yeah yeah so i i was just hoping that they would like use her and she wouldn't just be there like in the background or in the dinner scenes yeah kitchen or whatever because it's like she's committed to this project right now because and she can't really be anywhere else because she's focused yeah, on hope, heartland my hope about um jessica on heartland here is that like she has done other stuff there's been a few hallmark movies that she mm. did and then there's actually been quite a few little projects that she's been up to the past couple of years, but I'm really hoping that no matter what that Heartland is, her main focus, because, like, people love her. and yeah. love her character. And me especially, I'd be sad. Like, incredibly sad. Yeah. So my hope is that no matter what happens in the future or where Heartland goes, that, you know, she'll still be a vital part of the family. And she is more now than she's ever been in the show. Yeah, and I really loved her this season. Mm-hmm. Um, I know we were talking about season 15, but like, I, I, and we didn't really talk about her that much earlier. So yeah. her supporting Jack, you know, that episode with them at the hotel. I mean, I, I love that. And Never in a million years would have no, that was going to happen. <laughs> no, that is one of my favorite scenes from Me too. this season. And then, you know, we've always seen uh, Lou and Lisa kind of having hard time, but now they were, like, so close, and she was there. The relationship that they have is just, I love it, and it's it's so unproblematic because they really butted heads for the most of this entire Mm. show. So the fact that, like, they have that kind of relationship that they do now has been such great character development, yeah. So I'm excited to see what happens in the upcoming season. Now, what I think is going to happen in season 15 with Jack and Lisa, I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I didn't have anything. I just had no. uh, one word. I, don't, like, I, I have no idea. Like, I never thought they'd be in a, a hotel in Calgary. Yeah, exactly. Like, they, they're, they're kind of like, the wild drunk? car. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, so, yeah. um. Because it's nice having those episodes where they're just, like, the grandparents. Yeah. And then there's the episodes or even, like, the moments where they're Jack and Lisa. And it's, like, I love both. I like having yeah. that balance of both. Because, yeah. I don't know. It's just the character development I can't get over, especially for Jack and Lisa. Um, one thing I wrote down was, is Jack gonna retire or something? Just, like, throwing something out there. because And also because we saw... Was it episode nine where Jack and Tim were doing something with Hay and Tim just left and Jack was like, who's going to do your job or something like that. And I'm just wondering, like, now that Tim's traveling, like, is Jack alone? Like, is that going to be too hard for him? Like, how long is he going to be away? Sean's you know, younger than Jack is, so he mm. could, Jack could actually be immortal, you know? True. <laughs> realistically, at, you know, the age that Jack is supposed to be at, you, you would think you would see more of a slowdown than yeah 
you are seeing on the show, like realistically, not that I'd want that to happen, but it's just realistically, it should be a little more of a slowdown. Yeah, I I don't want anything too sad after, you know, season 14, but like, I think there should be something about that, maybe. Just because, you know, they're trying to keep it real. One more thing I wanted to add about season 15 is that I hope Cassandra comes back. Yes, it was so weird not seeing her. Yeah, I wish, um, you know, we would see her and Caleb and Carson together just to see kind of what the family dynamic is is like because now we've seen Caleb and Carson but like how does that fit with Cassandra like what kind of mother is she like and it would be nice to have Amy to have her friend back too yeah for sure okay so now we have had some birthdays this past week Quite a few, actually. Quite a few yeah. here. On the 18th, Cindy Busby turned 38. I am old. As Cindy Busby is 38, <laughs> I'm old. Not that 38's old, but I'm old. Because these people were my age. Yeah. When, like, started. Um, and Kevin has the same birthday as Cindy. But yeah. it doesn't say, like, anywhere on the internet, it doesn't say how old he turned. Like, you can't even find his birthday. I think I he know. might be born in like like nineteen eighty five or something. Because he's younger than Michelle, is he? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. So his they both had birthdays on the eighteenth, and then Jordan turned twenty seven on the nineteenth. For birthday twins, unfortunately, I have to report on a few deaths as well. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> it's tie. Let me get the sad music. Hold on. My condolences. Hold on. Okay. Welcome to the death segment. Now, unfortunately, we do have about four deaths to report. Y'all are dropping like flies. What is going on? My condolences go out to Amber for butter and popcorn. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That one kind of hurts. Yeah. Knocks. That was crazy. Dude. That's like, I, and, you know. I don't want to kill that predator. Those poor ducks. Yeah. They're trying to be ducks. Yeah, I mean, I, I understand, you know, those. Natural co- Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's like, it's hard to imagine her having to find her, dead. like, pet ducks, like, dead and, yeah. like, ugh. And they were so cute. Like, they literally looked like they were smiling in the pictures that Amber posted. So, yeah. My honest condolences. It's you know, And I think there were chickens as well. Were there really? Yeah, I think so. Oh, God. Well, she lost more than two, I guess. Yeah. Dang. Bad day on the farm. Now, Carrie James lost his, was it his grandma? Grandfather, I think. And he asked for dark humor. I said my condolences to him, but then he said that he appreciated the condolences, but he wanted dark humor. And I've really been thinking about some dark humor jokes, but it's hard to make dark humor jokes about someone you don't know. Yeah. I'm trying to think. Oh, no, Dennis. Yeah, I was. I just checked as well. Rest in wild adventures with the love of your life, stirring up shit in the afterlife. <laughs> Aw. Our condolences. Now... Heartland Stills Photographer from season one to... Season nine, I think. Nine? Yeah, I think. Because I... Because he took photos of just... Oh, okay. Well, his credits on IMDP were up to seventh episode of season nine, Fearless. But yeah, so he, he took... He would take the photos of the cast on the website, the, like the official photos. The photos for, you know, the posters, the... The stills photography, like all the photos, he took them. I I've met him a couple of times. A very sweet guy. He passed away. Um, so my condolences to his family and to the Heartland family. Um, he was he was around for a long time. He wasn't just some, you know, he he was just he was nice. I met him a few times. He was just such a nice person. Yeah, and the thing is, uh, like with my blog, 
you know, I don't just post about the cast, but I, um, you know, includes pictures from the crew as well and kind of related stuff about them too. Mm -hmm. So he was kind of the first person that I knew by name from the crew. Mm -hmm. So it, it was kind of like, I mean, I didn't know him, but it was strange because, you know, somehow you think that, these people you don't know live forever. We don't know them, but we know them. Yeah. Like, they don't know us. You probably had no idea who I am, but, like, I knew him, and I remembered that he was always nice to me. Yeah. And that he, took, he literally took photos of Jessica Steen, and I was single-handedly the best woman in my life, and I'm never going to forget that he did that for me. Yeah. So, yeah, it was hard to hear that he passed away. Um, Crazy to think, like, 14 years like, so many people have died, so many people have been born during that time, so it's, like, kind of crazy as a fan as well, because we've been watching the sh show for a long time, so they kind of yeah. become these people that we know about, so it's, like, is it weird to be kind of sad, even if... It is, like, it is so weird, and, and there's been times that other fans in our fandom have passed away, oh. and it has made me cry, because I've never necessarily met them in person, but we've talked online for years. Yeah. So that disappearance off social media really leaves a hole in your heart. And I was just thinking about one of my fandom friends, um, who we lost a few years ago, uh, just yesterday, like kind of like out of the blue just randomly and it's just like it goes to show that they still are in our minds even after years are, you thinking about? are we thinking about the same person i think maybe who are you thinking about laura lee yeah me too yeah i had never in my life like cried over someone I never personally knew more than when she passed away. Yeah. She battled with cancer, I believe, for such a long time. But she was the nicest person. She ran, she was Carrie James's biggest mm. fan. She yeah. For sure. fan page for a long time. So when she passed away, it was hard. It, it really shook the entire family, mm. I think. It, yeah. Um, and she left behind a three year old son. And that's, that's where it just really hurt. Um, yeah. It's, also kind of beautiful to think about that we wouldn't have ever talked to these people, not even with each other, if, if it wasn't for Heartline. We wouldn't be sitting here making this podcast. We yeah. wouldn't know each other. We wouldn't have been friends for 10 years if it wasn't for Heartland. Yeah. I wouldn't probably have traveled to Canada. Like, it's just like this, yeah. like, I just started to watch this show and didn't think much of it. And now, like... 10 years later i'm like what is happening this show has taken over my life basically so there's times where i think about the very first episode i ever saw and in that moment it's just like you have no idea what's about to come <laughs> well it's kind of like the last scene of season 14 like seeing ty waving like you have no idea what's about to come literally that's what i was thinking full about. circle why did i want to watch the show over again because i really haven't watched it all the way through in forever yeah same uh, and especially now that ty has gone it's gonna i feel like it's gonna be hard, <laughs> hard yeah to and it's it's gonna be like i mean they knew a few years in advance that i mean graham wanted to out but like then, like, if we were to watch it, the whole show from the start, would it be like, oh, they didn't know that the, this could be, like, foreshadowing, but it totally looks that like that now. Exactly. It's just, it's crazy how it all came full circle. Yeah. Um, the one last note I want to make before we wrap up, and I don't know if you saw this, but I saw this um, poll on Twitter, Netflix Life made mm -hmm. this poll did you see this is it Between one riverdale and yeah end? yep now personally i don't like riverdale i watched like the first season first season was good i think it's awful now but it's incredibly popular yeah i mean i've never seen it but i know it and that goes to show that it's popular if i know it i was quite nervous to see the poll results i'm like oh god so 
the fact that the results were what they were, I was so impressed. Nine percent. Oh yeah, I think I think I voted for that last yeah. night or something, and uh, it was something like that, and that was like, wow. Yeah, Riverdale was fifty-one percent. That means Heartland got forty-nine, and the fact that it came that close to a show like Riverdale, incredible. I was just blown away, and I'm gonna yeah. post the on our Instagram. Follow our Instagram H two H L, um, po- podcast. Yeah, H2HL podcast. Yeah. Um, Heart to Heartland podcast. Um, yeah, so I'm going to post that on there, and we're going to be posting lots of great content. Now, if you have any message or comments um, or questions, DM us on our Instagram or comment uh, below on our YouTube. Um, we need all the help we can get. Yeah, I'm going to include the links uh, to the YouTube um description box um but we're gonna have this episode on spotify and youtube so whichever you prefer to listen like just know that that's an option on spotify and youtube so yeah if you don't have spotify or if you don't have you know, any other way to listen to our podcast it's going to be on youtube that you yeah. can actually as well now what to look forward to we have a guest next week we have so many cool things lined up did you what else did we have to say before it's available on spotify and youtube follow our instagram follow her blog if you don't already heartlandians.tumblr.com nice blog for my blog yeah give her some clout guys i think that's i think we just wrapped our first episode yeah this is like 13 hours long (laughs) Sorry, no, we're, like, we're like nervous that it wasn't gonna go up to 30 minutes and here we are three hours later yeah. yeah i mean we're gonna edit this episode but i think it's still gonna be pretty long and um you know i hope you enjoyed listening to us talk about yeah. Ireland, and hopefully tune in next week i mean we're yeah. trying to make this make this weekly thing but you know this is just a hobby so if something comes up or like it's a lot of because you're in Finland and I'm in Canada. Yeah. So it makes it incredibly difficult. So bear with us. We're doing our best. It's currently Tuesday. We're hoping this will be up by Saturday. Yeah. Because we're still trying to figure everything out. Yeah. We, you may never even hear this. We don't know. <laughs> but if, if you, you hear know, this, thank you for like, listening. that's going to be awesome. Like, really, yeah. Really we, we made it. it. Yeah. All right. I mean, I think, you know, after all this heart to heart, we should give Thank you for lo- to our heart to heart talk. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think we should give some kind of advice. Like, how about keep your nose clean? Oh, and your powder dry, as they say. That's a that's a quote from Heartland. So yeah, if you get that reference, comment down below because yes, if you know what that reference is, should we say it again? Okay. So Keep your nose clean. And your powder dry, as they say. See you next week. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye.